this is Kara. Welcome to my video. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, how to draw clothes. You probably have heard of different types of folds. So folds are very important to when you're drawing clothes because that's uh, how uh, clothes will actually be looking like in uh, on people. Uh, so in this video, I'll first uh, list all different types and give some examples of what it looks like in reality by uh, simply sketching it out. And afterward, we'll use watercolor as um, a demonstration of like what these kinds of folds will be looking like in reality when you're actually drawing watercolor uh, portraits. Okay, so now let's talk about the first types of fold, which is called pipe. So pipe is named because it looks like a pipe. And what it happens is um, the, the, some, some point of the material is actually compressed and bunched together while the other part is hanging loose. Um, so this created some types of uh, semi-tubular tub tubular shapes to form um, the materials that's hanging free at the at the end. Um, so this is exactly uh, what a skirt would be looking like. Uh, so yeah, here, here I'm just drawing a skirt as example, uh, but of course uh, there's other types of things. It could be curtains, could be anything. For example, it could be at the end um, of the trousers or uh, something that you kind of folded at somewhere like this. The second type of fold is called zigzag. So zigzag look like uh, this, right? Um, uh, this basically means um, folds tend to alternate one another. And this really happen at um, the bottom part of the uh, pants, at the legs, uh, or uh, behind the knees, or um, like at, um, at on the sleeves. Uh, this is very common in uh, fabrics on uh, people. Um, one thing to notice is that uh, although we can start with a zigzag as a guideline, don't make it too literal um, because that would make the drawing a little more unnatural. Uh, in, in natural fabric, it's really uh, that neat zigzag. It may also happen on uh, t-shirts uh, where you sort of have the compression at the breast for uh, women and then it be create this kind of zigzag uh, pattern on uh, t-shirts as well. Uh, so I'm drawing an example here. Uh, the third type of fold is called spiro. Um, it is actually very similar to the zigzag one. Um, the major difference is now the compression is even further. Um, so for example, if you're folding your, uh, the, your clothes up on your arm, uh, it kind of compressed the uh, class a lot, so it creates this kind of spiral uh, shape um, on uh, your arm. So th this is an example. Of course, it can happen to trousers as well if you're rolling it up uh, and it creates a lot of pressure, so it creates this spiral shape as well. happens uh, when there is an abrupt change in the direction of fabric so this is very often seen um, near your knees and uh, your elbow uh, just any place when you're kind of bending your knee or elbow you will see this this kind of fold happen a lot Alright, let's go to the uh, fifth fold type, which is called diaper. So this happens when you have uh, two supporting points. So basically, the at the supporting point, the cloth will be uh, fixed at that position, while all the other places, they are free to um, drop uh, based on gravity. So this will be looking like this. So this happens when um, very often uh, near the shoulder. 
the last type is cough drop. Drop uh, commonly occur uh, when a material simply just drops off a form to hand freely. Uh, so in some sense, I would say pipe is a special form of drop. Uh, but here, the drop can happen in any cases. Um, so it can happen to um, uh, loosely fit pants um, and uh, dresses or uh, scarf. So it can uh, be anything. Okay, so far we have talked about all six types of folds. Um, in practice, the types are not so important. What is important is to understand what created it. So uh, folds exist because the cloth is not uh, uh, smoothly uh, fit into on the body. Uh, so the tighter the clothes is, the less folds you might be able to see. Um, and also it depends on the, the weight of the fabric and a lot of things. Um, so here I'm using um, uh, just a simple uh, drawing to uh, demonstrate uh, how different kinds of folds work together in one picture. Here I have labeled uh, or uh, representative folds uh, over the model. So uh, there is a diaper around the shoulder, uh, there are half lock around the elbow, there, there are zigzag around the sleeve, uh, and there are spiral and half lock at the same time uh, on uh, the arm and there will be drop and pipe um, at the bottom of the coat uh, in some sense. So it's a combination of all of the things. Uh, this is very common because in reality you won't have only one fold on your clothes. It's important to know how these different kinds of folds actually interact with each other in one picture. Uh, so this is just example. Uh, since today we'll be focusing on folds, uh, I'll be quickly uh, skipping the, the, the drawing of the skin part. Uh, I do have a specific tutorial video on how to make skin colors using watercolor. Uh, please do take a look if it's interesting how uh, I did that. Uh, so for this model, I'm using a relatively uh, neutral skin color that's a little bit pinkish. Um, and you can see uh, I added some shadow to the face and stuff. Um, but this is not the focus of this video, so uh, we just really skim through it. Uh, I think I accidentally painted her hands too dark. Um, so I eventually turned it to uh, black gloves instead of uh, skin color. Uh, but that doesn't really matter too much because we're showing how to draw folds in this uh, sample uh, painting. Uh, hope it is not so distracting to you. Uh, the goal of showing this time lapse is to, uh, as a demonstration of what is the influence of these folds on the shadow part. Uh, so here we assume the light is coming from the upper right in some sense, and you can see uh, many of the uh, pieces, many of the places in the fabric cannot be exposed to light because of the folds uh, and it changed the color into a darker one and uh, the more the, you pay attention to the shadows caused by the folds, the more um, uh, vivid the, the drawing would be, the painting would be um, because you're showing uh, more natural looking uh, fabric on uh, people. Okay, so it is almost finished. Uh, we're just adding some details here and there. Uh, in the summary of the video, uh, you can see that uh, although we have different types of folds uh, defined in the earlier videos, in reality, they always work together. And how they work together is by influencing both the shapes, uh, which was showing uh, in the sketches, and the shadows, which is showing in the uh, uh, watercolor drawing, uh, watercolor painting demos. Uh, so hopefully after uh, today's video, you're more confident in drawing folds. But to be honest, folds are complicated shapes, so it requires practice and requires try, try and error before you become more comfortable with it. I hope you have learned something into this video and keep practicing on those folds, uh, you'll be better. So uh, one thing I got uh, from some other YouTubers that I follow is that in order to improve your drawing or painting skill, you have to practice things that you fear. And folds and clothes are something I really don't like drawing. I like drawing faces, I like drawing portraits of the faces instead of the whole figure because folds and clothes are kind of very hard. Uh, but in order to improve, you have to practice the things that you don't know how to draw. And that's also uh, the um, one of the reasons I made the video. I hope it can uh, help people 
in understanding uh, thoughts and、uh, practice with me together to improve、uh, our drawing、uh, techniques. Hope you enjoyed today's video. See you next time.